Morning, this is Dr. Saurabh Galagli in Monterey, California. I received the MRI scan that you transferred. Let me walk you through the anatomic findings and then we'll schedule a follow-up call or a Zoom conference. This image that you see over here on the right is what we call the sagittal image. It's represented as if you were standing up. This is the skin of your back here. Your abdomen is down here. Down here we have the sacrum and on top of that we have five vertebral bodies that do not have ribs attached to them. So that's the center of L5, L4, L3, L2, L1. And then the 12th thoracic vertebrae would be here, which would have the 12th rib attached to it. In between each of these vertebral bodies, there's an intervertebral disc. The disc acts as a shock absorber and as a joint. So this, for example, is the L3-4 disc, so named because it separates the L3 from the L4 vertebral body. Behind that is the spinal canal. This is the front of the spinal canal. This is the back of the spinal canal. Here are the individual nerve roots going down the legs inside the spinal canal. And then this is an axial cross section over here on this side of the screen at the level of this green reference line. And when I'm over on this side of the screen and I scroll up and down, you'll see the reference line move up and down the spine. For the sake of orientation, you are lying on your back. So this is the skin of the back here. The abdomen is here and we are standing in your toes looking towards your head. So the right side of the spine is over here and the left side of the spine is over here. At the L4-5 level, here this is the L4 vertebral body, this is the L5 vertebral body, we have a series of radiographic findings that are worth noting. So the first is that there is evidence of degenerative disc disease. This disc here is relatively compressed in this direction when we compare it to a disc further up in the spine, such as this one. As the disc has lost its elasticity and its flexibility, the bone underneath is showing signs of edema or swelling in the bone, and that is seen as this cloud of white signal here above and below the L4-5 disc space, and we call those modic end plate changes. In addition, there is um, a disc bulge uh, pointing in the direction of the spinal canal and thickening of the facet joints and the ligaments at the back of the spine here. The best way to appreciate the degree of stenosis on this scan is on the cross section. So here in cross section, this is the spinal canal here at the L4-5 level. This is the intervertebral disc here. And then this is the facet joint on either side of the spine. So that's the left facet joint. This is the right facet joint. And here you can actually see the articular surface of the facet and appreciate that on the right side, there's a little bit of fluid inside the facet. The axial image is divided into three different sections. So here we have the central region of the spinal canal. Next, we have the subarticular zone, so-called because it's beneath the articulation of the facet joint. And finally, we have the uh, foraminal zone here where the nerve root is going out through a passageway called the neuroforamen. In your particular case, you have a fair amount of subarticular zone stenosis at the L4-5 level. So it's enlargement of the facet joints in this area that is trapping the L5 nerve root here just underneath the sub, the, just underneath the facet joint. And that typically would cause pain across the back in a belt-like distribution radiating down the sides of the thighs, the sides of the calves, and frequently into the top of the foot.